Form Labs, most people know the story. Founded by university friends, they beat their Kickstarter goal by a factor of 300, raising 3 million to launch the Form 1, an affordable resin 3D printer that suddenly made 3D printing accessible to a much wider group. But that was a decade ago. So how did Form Labs go from this to this? And most importantly, does it work? Welcome, I'm Michael Petch, Editor-in-Chief at 3D Printing Industry, and today we are going to be reviewing the Form Labs of Fuse One and Fuse Sift. Last year, Massachusetts-based Form Labs made their long-awaited move into a new market with the launch of the Fuse One. The Fuse One is a selective laser sintering, or SLS, 3D printer, and is a result of over seven years of research and development. It's marketed as the world's first industrial-grade benchtop SLS machine, combining high performance with a compact footprint. The system is intended as an accessible offering for engineers, designers and manufacturers seeking both functional prototyping and end-use polymer production, all at a fraction of the cost of larger industrial systems. And of course, our engineering team has put these claims to the test. To complement the 3D printer, Formlabs also launched the Fuse Sift, a post-processing system for use with the Fuse One. Let's run through the key components on the Fuse One and the Sift. The Fuse One has a compact frame. Compared to other SLS 3D printers, the system is highly space efficient, measuring just 645 by 680 by 1070 millimeters. It's also relatively light, weighing in at 114 kilos. That's without the build chamber or any powder. The machine features a full metal chassis and the enclosed build chamber can be heated to 200 Celsius. In terms of build volume, you get 1x65x1x65x300 by 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 mm of 3D printing space, or 8.17 litres. The powder tank or hopper has a maximum load of 8.5 kilos, that's ample powder capacity for the build volume provided. The build chamber is modular in that it can be removed in its entirety. This enables users to transfer the chamber to the SIFT post-processing station, making powder removal and recycling a breeze. We'll come back to this. In terms of energy source, the Fuse One uses a single 10 watt of atrium fiber laser diode. More details are on the screen. In terms of materials, your options are Formlabs Nylon 11 or Nylon 12. An expanded range is in the pipeline. So, how does the laser fuse, I mean sinter, that powder? It's smoke, obviously very little, and a HEPA filter handles that, and mirrors, or to be precise, galvometers. That is a high precision motor that controls the position of a mirror. The two galvos in the fuse control where the laser spot hits the powder on the X and Y axis in the build chamber. Once the new layer is fused to the previous, a roller levels off a fresh coat of nylon powder. Using a roller rather than a blade improves powder packing, gives uniform distribution, and should, in theory, produce higher quality 3D prints. Core functionality, including printer calibration, file management, and build management, can be handled by the front-mounted 10.1-inch full-color touchscreen. The UI is refined as you'd expect from an experienced company. The screen also doubles up as a monitor to watch the build progress. If you've not used SLS before, you might be questioning why the need for two machines. The few SIFTs solve several parts of a workflow problem. Unlike FFF, where gravity necessitates the use of supports for overhangs, 3D printing with a laser and nylon powder leaves you with a print free from supports, but embedded in a block of powder. And you're going to want to remove your print from that powder cake, and manual depowdering can get messy. The SIFT is a multi-stage post-processing system that takes the stress and mess out of the depowdering process. Individual stations are arranged neatly in order, and after transferring the Fuse One's build chamber to the post-processing unit, working through sieving to recapture and recycle powder for future prints, then rapid decaking with a vacuum-assisted station, you're left with your 3D print. Here it's important to note that following a few basic procedures will provide an enhanced operating experience. Nylon powder is made from very fine particles, so when locating the Fuse One or Sift in a workshop, you're going to want to keep it away from other tools that might contaminate that powder, for example, sandblasting. And of course, protect yourself, wear PPE. Let's take a look at the software. Preform will be familiar to anyone who has used a Formlab system. If you're new to Formlabs, then don't worry. The print preparation program is easy to use with a polished, clutter-free user interface. 
One of the main selling points of Preform is that it only has one set of predefined process parameters that can't be modified. While it might sound like a nightmare for the more advanced users out there who enjoy tinkering around in the settings, it means that there's less room for human error. The parameters that Formlabs has chosen work exceptionally well and result in high quality prints every time, though it does mean that the system is only compatible with the company's own nylon powders. Two software features we liked in particular are the stacking tool, which maximizes efficient use of the build chamber, and the powder fill level of calculator that ensures you don't waste material. You can also connect to the Formlabs online dashboard platform, which provides useful details about past, queued and failed builds, the status of the connected printers, and for material usage in each print job. This has proven to be a highly useful workflow overview tool. On the software performance side, there's not much to complain about here at all. The Preform Slicer is fast, bug-free and responsive, just how we like it. So ready to print? Not quite. The Fuse one takes about an hour to heat its build chamber before actually firing up the laser. However, this preprint heating process is automatic. Once the build is complete, you'll also need to let it cool down before transferring the build chamber over to the Fuse Sift. While the Fuse is warming up, a quick note on maintenance. Printer maintenance is an unavoidable part of 3D printing. Most of the issues you'll run into with the Fuse 1 can be attributed to two of the printer's key components, the IR sensor and the optical cassette. The IR sensor measures the temperature of the powder, while the cassette is the component through which the infrared waves and laser beams pass through to reach the powder bed. Keeping these two components clean between builds should be a priority. Otherwise, you can expect incorrect temperature readings and a deflected laser beam, a recipe for print failures. The standard cleaning process requires a quick wipe of ethanol. We test a lot of 3D printers and while the precise methodology is adapted to the specific technology platform under review, the 3D prints we use in the tests are concerned with examining the manufacturer's claims. Starting off with testing the basic claims such as actual performance versus advertised dimensions, then testing repeatability and then moving on to real world applications or how you might want to actually use this 3D printer. The Fuse one had no problems with the tower test and width test. Dimensions verified. Repeatability is crucial for any 3D printer that is going to be in regular use. Put simply, repeatability is the printer's capacity to produce multiple parts of the same or very similar dimensions. We run a lot of tests to check for this cornerstone element. Here, we 3D print our reference models and check for performance against expectations. What does this show us? In a nutshell, the results were excellent. After printing and measuring squares, polygons and tubes, the mean differences all dimensions was 0.0616 millimeters and the standard deviation or the amount of variation of these measurements was 0.057 millimeters. Now let's take the testing upper level with a more challenging model. Circular objects can be difficult to 3D print with ovals rather than a perfect circle being produced. First of all the STL model itself is made from polygons and polygons have sides. How many sides does a circle have? None. A side requires two distinct endpoints joined by a straight line. Also, like other SLS systems, the Fuse 1's Galvos work on a polar coordinate system. The axes are individually controlled by a sinusoidal function. This kind of function has dead points when the speed falls to zero. With the inertia of the system, the printer may lose accuracy, for example, when the angular velocity changes from zero radians per second to one radian per second. So, the expected difference between model and measurements for the circular trajectory test are between 0.05 and 0.1 millimeters. The results on the Fuse 1 were 0.0331 mm for the x-axis and 0.0285 mm for the y-axis, an excellent result. Testing showed a mean difference of 0.0308 mm for both axes with standard deviation of 0.0395 mm. A fantastic result. We also performed tests around process capability, a concept from the automotive industry. Now, without getting too deep into the weeds here, the process has a limit specification of plus minus 0.05 millimeters, meaning that approximately 34 parts per million would be non-compliant. Impressive. That's a lot of testing. Okay, so onto the section where we 3D print the kind of thing you might want to use the Fuse 1 for. First up, we printed this functional suspension model to determine if a fuse can manage a print in place mechanical print with very small tolerances. 
The print is perfect. After a few forced movements to remove the powder from the moving areas, everything works perfectly and the suspension performs as intended. Another model with complex parts and fine tolerances is this puzzle cube designed by Kurt Flagg or Agent Kurt on YouTube. The puzzle cube is a print in place puzzle that prints fully assembled. The Fuse One handled the test with ease. The surface quality is perfect, there are no visible defects, no warping or delamination. Dynamic prints such as these allow us to determine just how tight the tolerances of a 3D printer are, as the overall fluidity of the assemblies can be judged very easily. What's most impressive is that the Fuse One managed to print each and every one of the tiny components without accidentally fusing any of them together, despite the extremely tight spacing of the joints and gaps. The success of a puzzle cube is a testament to the precision of the system's laser and galvometers. Prototyping and model making are other applications of the Fuse One, so we printed some relevant models. Here you can see how the Fuse One handles a V6 engine block and an exhaust manifold with consistent diameters and defect free prints. And then we printed some more, and some more, and some more. Again and again, minimal post processing was required and excellent surface finishes all round. Streamlined printing workflow coupled with the reliable and refined processing parameters of a preform slicer makes the Fuse One an ideal system for short run functional applications. Bouncing off its market-leading position in the SLA sector, Formlab's SLS 3D printing debut is a banger. The Fuse One truly delivers on its promise of an accessible and cost-effective SLS experience, bridging industrial-grade print quality with a nifty scaled-down footprint. Beyond just a robust set of hardware components, the system offers a highly refined user interface, digestible learning curve, and one of the best repeatability profiles we've ever tested here at 3D Printing Industry. Then there's the Fuse Sift. Coupled with the Fuse One, the post-processing station makes powder removal and recycling as streamlined as can be, resulting in a well-designed, entirely end-to-end -end SLS 3D printing workflow. As far as limitations and shortcomings go, we thought the option to leverage third-party printing powders would have been great. As it stands, Fuse One uses a limited to printing nylon parts, but Formlabs is currently working on expanding its powder offering. We'd also argue that the option to fiddle around with the slicing parameters or import custom printing profiles could lend itself to previously unseen innovation. In the end, the Fuse One and Sifter are a formidable duo and any criticisms are dwarfed by the sheer value offered by these systems. Formlabs carefully crafted package is perfect for those seeking an accessible but comprehensive entry into SLS 3D printing.